Hello everyone, welcome back to Sydney and Starlet, and if you are new here, welcome. Welcome, enjoy the videos. videos. So today, me and Sydney are going to be reading Disney Cinderella. So let's begin. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful little girl named Cinderella who was loved by everyone. She was sweet, kind, and gentle. She and her widowed father lived happily together, but her father worried that Cinderella needed a mother. So he married again to a widowed, to a widow who had two daughters of her own. Then Cinderella's father died, leaving his daughters, her daughter, with her new family. With her husband gone, Cinderella's stepmother revealed herself for who she really was, a mean and spiteful woman who was jealous of Cinderella's charm and beauty. She cared only for her daughters, Gisela and Anastasia. They were no better than their mother. They could have been pretty, but their selfish and cruel natures made them look ugly. So the three of them put Cinderella to work as their maiden cook, ordering her about day and night. They kept her busy with sweeping, cleaning, washing, and dusting. And while they wore pretty gowns, Cinderella had only old dresses and aprons to wear. But in her attic bedroom, Cinderella was comforted by animal friends who came to visit her. The birds woke her in the morning with their sweetest songs. Cinderella sang to them about dreams of happiness that she hoped would come true. Some of Cinderella's friends were mice. She made clothes for them and always made sure they had food. One day, Jock, her favorite mouse, rushed in saying, Hurry, Cinderella! Come, come! What's the matter? She asked. Visitor! Cut and trap! Jock told her. Cinderella and the mice ran to the trap and found a frightened young mouse trembling inside. Cinderella freed him and then said, We must give him a name. I've got one. Octavi Octavius? <laughs> but for short, we'll call you Gus. The mouse nodded happily when he heard his new name. Cinderella dressed him in a little shirt and cap, and the newest member of the attic family looked right at home. Soon it was time for Cinderella to feed the chickens. Breakfast, she called, scattering corn for them. The chickens came running as Bruno the dog and Major the horse watched. When the mice heard Cinderella call, they came running too. Cinderella always gave them some corn to nibble. But the mice stopped in their tracks when they saw the cat blocking their way. That's Lucifi, Jack told Gus. Lucifi mean, but I've got an idea. Somebody has to let Lucifi chase him. Then everybody else ran out to the yard. The mice put their tails together to see who would be the unlucky one to have Lucifer chasing him. Jack pulled one of the tails, and it was his own. Jack ran out and gave Lucifer a big kick. As Lucifer chased him, the other mice scurried past the cat toward the chicken yard. Before Lucifer could catch him, Jack jumped into a teeny tiny mouse hole. The mice rushed to pick up the corn before the chickens could eat it all up. One chicken got very angry as it saw Gus picking up its food. Take it easy, Gus said to the chicken as Cinderella shooed it away. Then he hurried around to pick up as much corn as he could carry. Jack, who was still hiding in his mouse hole, saw Gus carrying his load of corn back into the house. Gus wasn't watching out for Lucifer at all. But Lucifer was watching Gus. The cat crouched down quietly and began to sneak up on him. Lucifer moved in close, ready to pounce. Finally, Gus saw him, dropped the corn, and raced away. The cat was just about to catch him when there was a loud bang. Gus turned to see Lucifer lying dazed on the ground. Jack had saved him by knocking the broom over onto Lucifer. Cinderella didn't see Gus's close call. She was too busy getting the breakfast trays ready. Ring, ring! Already, her stepmother, Drizella, and Anastasia were ringing their bells for her. Before the bells even stopped ringing, Cinderella was carrying three breakfast trays up the stairs. But Anastasia and Drizella were already yelling at her. What are 
are you doing? What a slowpoke you are, they cried. If you don't come at once, her stepmother threatened, you'll have to iron my entire wardrobe. Poor Cinderella was used to the complaints and threats. She heard them every day. Miles away at the royal palace, the king was doing some complaining of his own. It's high time my son got married and settled down, he said to his grand duke. I'm not getting any younger. I want to see my grandchildren before I go. He thought for a moment, then said, The boy is coming back today, isn't he? When the Grand Duke nodded, the king continued, Well, what could be more natural than a ball to welcome him? And if all the illegible maidens in the kingdom just happen to be there, why, he is bound to show interest in one of them, isn't he? So that very day, as Cinderella scrubbed the floor that Lucifer had purposely dirtied, there was a loud knock at the door. Open in the name of the king, called a royal messenger. Cinderella went to the door. An urgent message from his imperial majesty, the messenger announced as he handed her a sealed envelope. Then he left to deliver the rest of the envelopes, just like it, to all the other eligible maidens in the kingdom. Cinderella's stepmother opened the envelope and read the invitation to the ball out loud. The two stepsisters could hardly contain their excitement. Each of them was so excited, in fact, that she could already imagine the prince falling in love with her and asking her to be his bride. Cinderella listened with glowing excitement. Why, I can go too, she said. You, dancing with the prince? Drizella shrieked with laughter. I can see it now, said Anastasia, imitating Cinderella. I'd be honored, your highness. Would you hold my broom? And she burst into cruel laughter. Well, why not? said Cinderella. The royal command says that every eligible maiden is to attend. So it does, said her stepmother. I don't see why you can't go, if you get all your work done, and if you can find something suitable to wear. Cinderella rushed to the attic and found an old dress that had been her mother's. It's a little old-fashioned, she said, holding the dress up to her, but I'll fix that. She opened a book of dress patterns and found one she liked, but she started, but as, but as she started to plan just how she wanted to alter the dress, her stepsisters and stepmother called her away. Cinderella sighed. Oh well, I guess I ha I guess my dress will just have to wait. After she left, the mice took a look at the dress pattern she'd pick. We can do it. They said, we can help our Cinderella. And with that, they transformed the old dress into a beautiful ball gown. The birds helped lift things to where the mice couldn't reach. Everyone pitched in, gathering material from all over the house and pinning and sewing it onto the dress. Gus and Jack even managed to get a sash and some beads from Anastasia and Drizella. Lucifer saw them, but they escaped with sharp claws. They escaped his sharp claws. When Cinderella was at last finished with her chores and with helping Anastasia and Gisela, she looked out the window at the palace. It was too late to get ready for the ball, even if her evil stepmother would let her go. Sadly, she climbs the stairs to her room. Suddenly, the mice yelled, Surprise! Cinderella turns to see the pretty gown she would wear to the ball. Why, I, I never dreamed. It's such a surprise, she said. Oh, thank you so much. Then she hurried to put on the gown and reach the coach before it left with her step family. Wait for me, Cinderella called as she rushed down the steps. Do you think it will do? She asked, touching her gown. How very nice, said her stepmother. Don't you think so, girls? Then Anastasia and Drizella noticed the sash and other things of theirs that the mice had used. That's mine! Give it here, they cried, and tore at Cinderella's dress. Soon the beautiful ball gown was nothing but rags. Cinderella's animal friends watched sadly as she sobbed in the garden. 
As they wondered what they could do to comfort her, they noticed a bright, sparkling light overhead. It grew larger and brighter, then dropped beside Cinderella and turned into Cinderella's fairy godmother. Cinderella looked up in wonder. Now dry those tears, her fairy godmother said. You can't go to the ball looking like that. Oh, but I'm not going, Cinderella told her. Of course you are, said her fairy godmother. We will have to hurry. She waved her hand in the air and a magic wand appeared. Cinderella and her mice friends could only stare. First, I'll need a pumpkin. With the wave of her wands, the fairy godmother made a pumpkin run over to where she was standing. When it grew, then it grew and its vines grew until it changed into a magical coach for Cinderella. Oh, it's beautiful, said Cinderella. Isn't it? asked her godmother. Now with an elegant coach like that, we'll simply have to have... Ah, mice! She waved her wand again, and Gus and Jack and two of their friends turned into four white horses. Astonished, Cinderella watched her fairy godmother change Major the horse into the coach driver and Bruno the dog into the footman. When she turned to Cinderella, And now for you, what a gown this will be! With a smile, the fairy godmother changed Cinderella's torn dress into a beautiful ball gown with glass slippers for her feet. Cinderella was ready to leave for the palace. Before she stepped into the coach, however, the fairy godmother said, You must understand, my dear, that on the stroke of midnight, the spell will be broken and everything will be as it was. The coach will change back into a pumpkin, the horses will become mice again, and your gown will be rags. Oh, I understand, said Cinderella, but it's more than I ever hoped for. When Cinderella reached the palace, everyone wondered who would be arriving in such a beautiful coach. It must be royalty, they, mur they murmured. Who could have guessed that it was Cinderella, who just that afternoon had been scrubbing muddy footprints off the floor? The ball was just beginning as Cinderella ascended the gigantic staircase. Oh, how happy I am, she said to herself. The king and the Grand Duke watched from the balcony as the maidens of the kingdom were announced to the prince. He didn't seem very interested in any of them, and even yawned. As Anastasia and Drizella curtsied before the prince, the king said, Oh, I give up. It's useless. But then, as the prince straightened up from bowing to the stepsisters, he saw Cinderella. He left her stepsisters behind and led her to the ballroom. The king commanded the band to play a waltz. The prince began dancing with Cinderella. Both had found true love. The king was overjoyed, but Cinderella's stepsisters and stepmother were not. Who is she? they asked. No one in the crowd seemed to know. As her stepmother watched, she said, there's something familiar about her. Cinderella and the prince went out into the palace garden. They were about to kiss when the clock began to toll midnight. Oh my goodness, said Cinderella. It's midnight. She ran out of the palace before the prince or the grand duke could stop her. As she rushed down the palace steps, she lost one of her glass slippers. The coach dashed away from the palace, racing against the tolling of the clock. Midnight came closer and closer. When the clock stopped tolling, Cinderella was back in her ragged gown and her fine horses were mice again. All that reminded of her magical night was one sparkling glass slipper. The king slept through, the king slept right through Cinderella's disappearance. Already he was dreaming that Cinderella had married his son and that he was playing with his grandson. The following morning, Cinderella was so happy that her stepmother watched her suspiciously. Then the news came that the Grand Duke would visit every household to try to find the glass slipper's owner. Drizella and Anastasia piled Cinderella's arms high with their clothes. 
Hurry with these. We have to get dressed. Cinderella nodded dreamily and handed the clothes back to Gisela. Oh yes, we must get dressed. Suddenly, her stepmother knew that Cinderella had been the one dancing with the prince. She quietly followed Cinderella to her room and locked her in. Let me out! Cinderella cried. For her stepmother put the key in her pocket and went downstairs. Jack and Gus saw what happened and hurried after her. They pulled the key out of stepmother's pockets and slid down the slid down her dress with it. Struggling up the stairs with their load, they tried to reach Cinderella before it was too late. Meanwhile, the Grand Duke and his footmen were trying to squeeze the tiny slipper onto Anastasia's big foot. As Jack and Gus made their way towards Cinderella's door, Gisela tried on the slipper. It didn't fit her either, no matter how she tried to squeeze her big foot into it. Finally, Jack and Gus reached Cinderella's door and slid the key to her. As Cinderella ran down the steps, the Grand Duke said, These are the only ladies of the household, I presume? Please wait, Cinderella called. May I try it on? Her stepmother told the Grand Duke to, to ignore Cinderella, but he insisted on having her try the slipper. So her stepmother slyly tripped the footman. The glass slipper fell and smashed. Oh no, cried the Grand Duke. This is terrible. Perhaps if it would help, Cinderella started to say. No, nothing can help now, said the Grand Duke. But you see, I have the other one, Cinderella said, holding up her glass slipper. The Grand Duke quickly slipped it on her foot. It fits perfectly. He had found the prince's true love. Soon Cinderella and the prince were married. The Grand Duke and King watched the wedding happily. Cinderella's mouse friends watched too, dressed in their royal best. And they all lived happily ever right, King. after the end. So that is it for today, everyone. Really hope you all enjoyed it, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Pick out your favorite page. What's your favorite thing in this page? Gus! Gus! All right. Bye-bye!